Hello and welcome to One Word Show, the most show in the world. My name's Jacob, if you don't know that already. Hello. And today I'm joined by Ed. Hello, Ed. Hi. So uh, I can tell even just by the look on your face, you don't really know what's going on here. Correct. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> you came in earlier today for a episode of one of our other shows, Political Radar. And I'm like, hey, can you stay after and do this? And you said, sure. What are we doing? And I said, you'll find out. Okay. I'm trusting you, Jacob. So what we're doing today is a show called One Word Show. You may have gotten that from our little intro we did 45 seconds ago. And uh, the way this works is I have used the power of the internet to randomly generate two words. They can be any words from the dictionary. Okay, mm -hmm. and you get to pick one of those two words, and that's going to be the subject of this discussion. We're just going to talk about that word for a little while. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Okay. Are you ready for your words? Yes. Your words are monarchy and casino. All right. <laughs> yep. So you get to choose one of those. I'll pick monarchy. You're going to choose monarchy? Yes. You don't like casinos? Or do you have something wrong against them? Did you get thrown out of a casino in Vegas? Not Is at all. I, 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 I'm not a gambler that way. So I, uh, right. no, I, uh, I do like going to casinos in Las Vegas for their buffets, but uh, other than the that. The buffets and yeah. maybe some of the entertainment. Uh, mainly the buffets. Mainly the buffets, buffets. and you know, people watching. Yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So you chose monarchy. Yeah. So. Tell me about the word monarchy. What does it mean, first of all? Monarchy is a form of government. It's a, it's a form of government that relies upon the rule of one person, a one-person rule. We're talking about a king, a queen. Uh, uh, not very common anymore. Um, even where you have monarchies, you still have a uh, more of a, uh, a representative government that actually does all the work. Uh, the British Empire... Uh, strictly speaking, is a monarchy with Queen Elizabeth II, uh, but she doesn't really wield any power. She's uh, more of a, a figurehead. Figure yeah, there you go. Yeah, you know, someone who's there to sell merchandise and make the people happy with some propaganda. Yet, when the when the prime minister is elected by uh, parliament, uh, as I understand it, uh, that individual still has to be approved by the queen, I, I, although I believe that's, that's mainly a formality, but, mm -hmm. but that, uh, that tradition holds. And it, it's uh, interesting just from the point of view of it being a tradition that has such a long history, even though the, uh, the actual uh, function of a monarch has changed so dramatically over the years. I believe there are only a few full monarchies in effect in the world. I want to say that one of the only ones that has a more traditional monarchy where the uh, king or queen has more power is Sweden, of all countries. Is that right? Yeah, I okay. think so. You can fact check me on that later, though. <laughs> I will check you on that because I, I, I understood that uh, you know, Sweden's, uh, Sweden also has a parliament. I don't know yes. if they call it that, but uh, that you know, they had, uh, have some form of representative government as well. Um, you know, I think of, uh, you know, Japan with an emperor, yes. but, you know, they have the diet that is a, a, a representative government, which interestingly was uh, put into place by General Douglas MacArthur. At least, I mean, he was, he was the uh, mm -hmm. engineer of it after World War II, but they still maintain their emperor. But uh, after World War II, the, uh, the power of the emperor was, was really eviscerated. So here's my next question. Why do we separate monarchies from other forms of dictatorships um for example for example could you call kim jong-un a king i mean he's a ruler of a country who has complete power and he inherited it from his father who inherited it from his father yeah doesn't that make him a king i i, I think it would fit that fit that uh, I, I think it's um the title that they choose to uh, to assign themselves, I suppose he could assign himself that title of king, and who's going to argue with him over there? Right. Yeah. So who, then, is your favorite monarch? I love history, uh, and I, I'm totally nerding out at that question. Um, who is your favorite monarch from all of history? Wow. I, you know, I've never thought of that. Yeah. I, there are so many great ones. You could pick Catherine the Great of Russia, 
Uh, you could pick uh, Queen Elizabeth. You could pick uh, my personal favorite, which is uh, Justinian. Oh, you're going way back. Yeah, okay. way back. B- the Byzantium okay. Empire. Mm-hmm. He's really cool, but I could spend way too much time talking about that, and I don't want to take up your time. Uh, I've never thought about a, a, a favorite. Uh, probably, uh, if I had to name one, I, I, I might name uh, Queen Victoria of the British Empire uh, from the 19th century. Uh, she was on the throne forever and a day. Uh, much like was, our the current Queen much of like England. Much like the current one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How long has the Queen been? Since, Since 1952, yeah. I believe, 52 or 53. I think it might be 53. That's a long time. Yeah. She was very young then, and now she is certainly not. And I just um, I just read where her husband, the, the, the royal consort, Prince Philip, Philip yep. is retiring. Now, the guy's like 96 or 97 years old. And I suppose he uh, <laughs> retires from it. what? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of work that goes into, you know, being a monarch. Um, certainly not as much as once was. You know, if you make a wrong decision, you know, it could be off with their head, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but nowadays, they still do a lot. And I read somewhere Maybe that... Ceremonial, but yeah. yeah. A lot of ceremonial stuff, but they're, they still keep busy. Um, I also read that there are certain things that the Queen of England gets that no one else gets um, because of the way her authority works. For instance, the Queen does not have a passport. Oh. Because she's the one legally who gives out passports. Interesting. They're not through the government it, the, itself. It's through the monarchy. Just a weird little thing that happened because of, you know, the thousand years of history of the British monarch. Interesting. Yeah. So you did your research on that? Not really. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm one of those people who just soaks in the facts, you yeah. know, and then go, where do I know that from? So... What is a what would happen right now if there was a giant revolution in the United States due to political turmoil? Not that hard to imagine. And we decided, you know what? Screw all of this. Let's just have a monarchy. Who would be the monarch? Oh. Yeah. Um <laughs> Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. All right. Hanks, yeah. You know, that's not a terrible option. Uh, yeah. It probably is a terrible option, but at <laughs> least we would have a fun reign, would we not? Yeah. Yeah. I would trust him. Yeah. All right. So what if in some crazy alternate reality, you became the monarch? I would be a very benign monarch. I would be kind and, and uh, you know, I would... Uh, Are you sure it wouldn't, you know, go to your head and you'd be one of those crazy monarchs? Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully yeah, not. Hopefully not, yeah. But um, you know, absolute power, you know what they say. So. It does corrupt. Absolutely. So what if you became monarch right now and had absolute power in the United States, what would be your first decree? Uh, my first decree would be to um, reestablish representative democracy and uh, <laughs> Just, I'm <laughs> not abolish doing this. the monarchy. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Say what you want, but that would be unexpected. You know, yeah. we hand you the keys to the kingdom, sire. I don't want them. Take them back. Mm-hmm. Okay, but if you could, you know, maybe in the process of relinquishing all of your power, would you keep yourself as a figurehead? Would you keep yourself on the money? Oh, yeah, I keep myself on the money, yeah. that. If, <laughs> what does it pay? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I got royalties for that $20 bill. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, ten cents on the dollar of every yes. dollar spent, I'm I'm there. Yeah. Wow, that would be okay. pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I have one last question for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are your final thoughts on the word monarchy? It's a very interesting historical study. Something that I think in uh, in the 21st century has uh, essentially outlived its its time. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than the ceremonial, um, but very, very interesting to study. Yeah. And, you know, it. I do think they were really important back in the day when, honestly, we needed them, you know, because the commoner wasn't exactly educated enough to make wise decisions, right? You know, in the, back in the Middle Ages, the days of the peasant. Um, and I think they were useful in helping us get to a point where we didn't need them anymore. Do you agree? Maybe. 
Uh, not not entirely. I, I I tend to think about what was in the hearts and minds of of the men and women in the then the mm-hmm. thirteen colonies and why they rejected a monarchy. And there are certainly why they demanded self determination. And you know, there uh, certainly have been bad monarchs as well. Well, there were those who thought King George III was a wonderful monarch. Yeah, uh, just you know uh, that you know it was it was Lord North who. Uh, as the prime minister who committed the intolerable acts and what have you, but the the essence of it was that no, we are we are free, independent people, and and mm-hmm. you know, one person is as good as another, and a monarchy, you know, is really saying that there is a class of people, the peerage, who are separate from from the commoners and deserving by birthright of certain things that that you and I, who are not part of that. And, and I, I, I just can't get behind that. You know, it's always interesting to me how even back then, after the colonists won their independence, we like to think of it as a unanimous, everyone wants freedom. But that very much wasn't the case. There were people who fully expected or wanted George Washington to become the emperor. There was that. I mean, that's, uh, you know, anecdotal. It might be apocryphal that, that he was offered the... You know, yeah opportunity to be king that he he uh, rejected that I, I know I don't know I've, I've got uh, now imagine how different things would have been if he hadn't done that there's a if thought that actually happened and, right and, you know right right but the other thing that you said is very very true in terms of of people's thoughts and wishes uh, traditionally we we've learned that uh, fully a third of the of the people in the colonies at the time were uh, royalists they were Tories. They, they wanted no part of independence from England. Uh, about a third wanted that independence, and about a third were ambivalent about it. So yep. it could have gone either way. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining me, sharing some uh, knowledge, some facts, some fun discussion. I know oh, it's very short, um, but that's how we like it. You know, quick, fast paced, lots of fun. So thanks for joining me. And uh, if you guys out there would like some more regal episodes of the One Word Show, you can go to www.onewordshow.com to find more episodes, or you can check us out on YouTube. Thanks. Very good. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Okay. Okay.